Hello there. I have just released my new Ruby on Rails 7 course on Udemy. Here we'll, we'll learn how to build Rails applications from the ground up. We'll build five applications. We'll start off with a simple blog application where we'll learn the fundamentals of Rails. We'll learn how to use the Rails generator, how to generate scaffolds and models and controllers and views. Then we'll move on to an appointment booking application. Here, we'll learn how to use additional gems such as device for authentication. And we'll also learn how to add simple CSS to our application. We'll also learn how to use relationships and associations between models here. And then for our third project, we will create a notebook application where users will be able to take notes. For this application, we'll also use Tailwind CSS and we'll also explore relationships and associations further. Then for our fourth application, we'll dive into Hotwire and we will refactor our notebook application and we'll use turbo streams and turbo frames to make dynamic changes to our application. This is one of the coolest features of Rails 7 and I can't wait for you to explore it. And finally, for our last application, we'll also use Turbo Streams to create a chat application where users will be able to move to different rooms and have various chats with each other. So I'll link this course in the description below. Today, we'll learn how to deploy our Rails applications to Railway.app. Railway is a platform as, as a service similar to Heroku, and so we'll learn how to deploy our applications here. To begin, we'll create a blank application, which I've done here, and we'll add Tailwind CSS to it. So I'm just going to copy this, and we'll add bundle add Tailwind CSS Rails. Now that we've installed it, we can run Rails Tailwind CSS install. This will configure Tailwind CSS for us. Now that that is complete, we'll generate our scaffold using Rails generate scaffold. We'll simply say article. I want to have title and content. And we can run Rails DB prepare to create our database and run our migrations. We simply update our routes. And then we can start our server. And there we go. Everything works fine. But we want to configure our application to use Hotwire. We want to be sure everything that requires that Rails requires, including Redis, to work. So we head over to our index page. And then we can simply add our turbo stream tag, or rather our turbo frame tag. We can say turbo. frame tag and we say new notes and we use a do block here we close this here and then we head over to new.html.erb and we wrap this in the same turbo frame tag so when we come back here and we refresh the first first content and see it works but we're not responding to our controller I've not specified our action yet for turbo stream so we head over to articles controller and we come to our create action we can see format.json and format.html we can simply say format turbo stream and then if we head back to our views, we can simply create, create a view for our turbo stream. So that would be create 
dot turbo stream dot erb and here we can simply say turbo stream dot prepend articles do and what do we want to prepend well, we want to render out the new article that we just created. So we can do that. We can refresh and try it again. It's second content. And there we go. Everything works good enough. So there are some changes that we have to make first before we de deploy our applications to railway. If we head over to our database.yaml and we come here, we can see our information has been set up, but we also have to add the URL for our database. And that URL is our environment variable database.url. So we can add this and save it. Next, we'll have to create a proc file for our application. So if we scroll down, you can see we already have a proc file here. But this is not the file that Rails we will use. So we'll go ahead and create another one. We'll simply call it proc file. And we also want to have our CSS, Tailwind CSS um, watch run in our, in our new proc file here. But first we'll say, we'll say web rig db migrate so every time we deploy our application we want to run db migrate and then we can say bin rails server zero 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 and then we can specify the port and this is um port 3000 and then we also want to run bin rails tailwind css watch so now that we've done all of that we can use git and say git add git commit and you can just say initial setup rails railway requires that we use github um, to deploy our application so i'll simply head over to my github page and create a new application there so when i get our page i'll just call this episode this should be 25 sample and save this and create the repository and I'll copy this and simply push our application there so if we refresh here you can see our application has been employed so we'll head over to railway so what you have to do is simply just create your account and it will ask you to um, link your github account so we'll start a new project here and first we'll say we want to provision redis as you know redis is a requirement to use hotwire and then And then, when the Redis has been created, we'll create our PostgreSQL database. You can see it says spinning up our um, spinning up PostgreSQL. And then we can click on New right here, and you can see we can select our GitHub repo. You can see all our applications here, and I believe I called this episode 
25 sample. So I can go ahead and click right here. You can see it said um, deploying right here. And there you go, you can see our application is building now. If we click on it, let's see, we are able to view logs. And we can see everything that is happening. If we go to settings here, you can see it gives us the option to generate our own domain name, or we can add a custom domain. So let's just click on generate domain name. And there we go. So this is where we'll be able to access our application. Our deployment is still taking place. We can come back here and look at our logs once again. And there you go, you can see it switched to active. And our Puma server has started up. So if you go back here and we click on our settings, we can see our custom domain. And if we click on it, it will open up for us. And let's give it a few seconds. So if we open it, after giving it some time, you can see it says block host. So to allow request to the domain name, we have to add the host name directly to our environment variables, to, to our environment. So we can simply just go ahead and copy this. Head back to our application. Head over to production and we can simply add this here and the same thing for development we can just add it here again and with that you can run git add and then git commit added host name and we can run git push So with that, we can come back here, head back to railway. And then we can see it starts building again. So there are automatic um, de redeployments taking place. So now that everything's complete once again, let's come back here. Let us refresh. And we can see our application is up and running now. You can see, let's try first content here. Nice work. I'm gonna click on create article. You can see it's our application is connected to Redis. and everything works fine. So that is it for deploying our applications to Railway as an alternative to Heroku.